starts next month during the interview phase. Then come March, March 3rd, all the way up to summertime, it is the interview phase. So that's what the interview, uh, the enumerators will go about to each household and then actually conduct the surveys, I mean, conduct the questionnaires with the, with the household members. With concerns about public safety, Guinness says census employees will be easily recognizable. You'll see the census worker wearing a yellow, bright yellow safety vest, which has an insignia, the census logo on the left-hand side. They'll have two ident identifiers, which is the federal badge and also the Guam, the Guam, the Guam badge as well. Um, they'll also have the, you know, the tote bag, the U.S. Census tote bag, the official tote bag. Um, if they are going to be driving around the neighborhoods, you'll see them either with a magnet on their vehicle or placards that would be placed on their dashboards. All data that is collected during the interview phase will remain confidential. Information that is collected from the census helps direct federal funds to local communities like Guam for schools, roads, and other public services. For more information, go to Guam at 2020census.gov. For Guam News Network, Guahusi Chris Barnett. Additionally, the Guam Census Office is still accepting applications and advises you to stop by their office. The Guam Green Growth Working Group was established to determine what actions must be taken to ensure the sustainable development of our island. Joan Ogden Charfris has more. Recently, more than 60 representatives from the public, private, and civil sectors came together at the Guam Museum for the launch of the Guam Green Growth Working Group. The group was established by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero through an executive order. The Guam Green Growth um, was established to provide a uh, avenue, I think, and a forum where we can all meet together as a community, both public, private, government, uh, nonprofit organizations, of course, our educational institution, so that we can sit down and look at how we can uh, direct our efforts in a very organized and focused way so we can actually have uh, deliverable outcomes and how we can decrease the effects of climate change. And most importantly, uh, to be able to then meet our agenda of sustainability. The G3 Working Group incorporated the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals and will build upon the partnership Guam has with the local 2030 Islands Network, which is an island alliance advancing locally and culturally driven models for sustainability. University of Guam for Island Sustainability Director Austin J. Shelton says that this all ties in with the upcoming 11th Annual Sustainability Conference happening from March 31st to April 3rd. The theme is Island Wisdom for a global future. We have lots of lessons as past sustainable societies as those words um, attributed to Chief Haram. Uh, we have these sustainability lessons that can now be blended with modern technologies to help move us toward that global sustainable future. After the launch, group members broke into smaller groups to build the framework. Groups tackled topics such as health, education, natural resource management, and agriculture with one goal in mind. To be at the global forefront of the movement for island sustainability and to, so we can achieve our sustainable future. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Goncharfris. Lack of maintenance and the safety of the students. These are the two driving forces behind Juan M. Guerrero Elementary School's parent-teacher organization, President Deli Vasco, taking the lead to repair the building's roof and awnings. As we've reported, after government officials did not respond to their cry for help, funds were raised by students and parents in order to purchase the necessary equipment. And over the weekend, Evasco and the school principal, Rose Castro, were joined with a few others to begin the roof reconstruction. Evasco said they were hoping to complete this portion of the project by this past Monday. However, they did not get as many volunteers as expected. Since Saturday, we've had a couple of the guys um, here they fixed a portion and then yesterday we had four guys up here uh, tearing down and repairing the roof so as you can see here it's halfway done <laughs> we just need more hands in order to get everything finished in time for those that want to volunteer and help these dolphins, they will be back on the school grounds this weekend finishing up the awnings and roof repairs. You can contact Dell at 688-0446. Give Love, Get Back is a project that aims to collect donations for some of the island's nonprofit organizations. With this story is Joan Ogden Charferes.
From now until February 12th, the AmeriCorps Vero Outreach Group, along with community partners, will be accepting donations. To collect clothing for those who need to be work ready, who don't always have the means to do that. Um, school supplies for the beneficiaries that we provide, um, mentoring services, homework services too as well. So that would be the Kapiti community, uh, the, the Island Academy, and of course St. Paul where we're at, who does amazing things for the community as well personal hygiene products, we are looking to collect those for our victim shelters as our PAN organization is Vero, the victim advocates reaching out. And we, we know that in the shelters, many people show up for emergency services without personal care, uh, shampoo, soaps, uh, anything like that. Sarah Titano is program director for AmeriCorps Vero Outreach, which is under the Serve Guam Commission, and says the brilliant idea for the project came from the members who wanted to give back to the community in a very very impactful way. Under our program, we do focus on three ways to hit the community with the gaps in services under economic opportunity, um, education, and also with capacity building. AmeriCorps offers space for individuals of all ages above 17 to do volunteerism. According to Titano, while the youngest may be 17 years old, the oldest member is 55. So it's a very diverse group of people who show up to do amazing work in the community. We wanted to kind of wrap up that spirit of giving. People are decluttering their lives in the beginning of the year and then cap it um, by Valentine's. So more like a give, uh, giving back on the day of love. Items can be dropped off at the following locations. Serve Guam Commission in the GCIC building, Infusion Coffee and Tea in the Camacho Landmark building, and St. Paul Christian School Main Office. For more information, you can email ac.vero.outreach at gmail.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Goncharfres. Stay tuned next on Weekend Edition. We have trend spotting and still to come the Guam Crime Stoppers Report. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Attention Guam business owners, Green Energy Solutions would like to help you save on your power bill. We supply various LED lighting, energy efficient air conditioners, solar thermal VRF systems, and solar panels. You can count on our product warranty and quick turnaround and immediate response service. GESI has saved other local businesses over 80% off their power. Call us to see how much we can save your business. Call us today at 647-8111 or visit GESIGuam.com for more information. Top of the day, I'm in the club. Top of the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Top of the day, I'm in the club. This past week, many of you voiced your concerns on whether you think Guam is prepared to handle the coronavirus. This up next and more on trend spotting. Hop it everyone, I'm Cami Aguirola and welcome back to another episode of Trend Spotting. This week I'm here at Two Lovers Point and we're starting off with the visitors industry remaining vigilant about the coronavirus. Administration officials say they're doing all they can to try and keep the deadly coronavirus from Guam shores. On Tuesday, February 4th, they met with members of the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association. GHRA President Mary Rose coordinated the meeting with public health, the airport and customs, and quarantine to go over the latest developments, which include the release of more than 30 visitors now staying at their hotels. Safety protocols are well established and have been referred to in the past, but the governor's chief of staff, Tony Babautza, said public concerns that their safety is being compromised to accommodate tourism are not true. And while the administration says it's keeping up with federal guidance, many on social media say they should be doing more. Babauta said the rapid development of the coronavirus threat has officials nationwide scrambling to deal with it. We believe that we're doing all we can to protect the community and to protect the island, Babauta said. There have been more than 2,200 tourist cancellations since February 3rd, according to the Guam Visitors Bureau. GVB President Pilar Laguatnia said she's not concerned at this time. She acknowledges that the travelers are reluctant to fly during times of an outbreak such as the coronavirus. Until travelers regain confidence, she said GVB and the industry will continue to get the message out that precautions are being taken to keep both residents and visitors safe. Here are some of your comments. 
One Facebook user said they had all the time to stop all flights coming into Guam when it started hitting Japan and other countries. You better hope it hasn't landed on Guam. Lives should have come first, not greed. Another Facebook user, Vanessa Marie Titanotova, said, That's extremely upsetting that at least the area of the clinic and where the man was isn't even being shared. We knew more about dengue than we do about this virus that can kill. And Bell Nandez said, Guam isn't ready, public health failed us big time. This is serious and it is not to be taken lightly. Did the officials do anything to coordinate with other agencies just in case? Well, now they are looking for a patient that left the clinic. American Medical Clinic Dr. Vince Akimoto says he believes that Guam is not prepared to handle the coronavirus. The, the real disaster that is the Guam Memorial Hospital emergency room. You can't get in. So if you have coronavirus, um, you better order Heineken because you ain't going to get coronavirus treated at GMH tonight. American Medical Clinic's Dr. Vince Akimoto does not believe the Guam Memorial Hospital is prepared to handle the coronavirus. The local physician says although the Department of Public Health is doing its job in terms of informing the community about what they should prepare, we are dangerously and recklessly behind the curve in terms of acute care hospital facilities. He told KOAM, If a case comes to Guam, <clears throat> um, we're going to need better coordination between the clinics and the hospital and, and between Realistically, uh, the prioritization of acute care resources. We, we're going to have limited supplies of IVs. We're going to have limited supplies of oxygen. We're going to have limited supplies of all the different protective d devices. And so if we don't work together, there's going to be a lot of um, chaos and uh, confusion. Here are some of your comments. On Instagram, at Sloan Love said, impressed that he's telling it like it is and hoping his voice is heard somewhere up high enough where some action will happen. Another Instagram user, Guam Glow 671 said, yeah for Dr. Akimoto for speaking out. Are the hospitals in Guam getting the message? I certainly hope so. Public Health announces that there are zero cases of coronavirus on island. Public Health says a man who reportedly left a clinic Tuesday after being told he might need to be isolated to test for possible coronavirus infection has been cleared. American Medical Clinic's Dr. Hua Wen said a walk-in patient came in Tuesday with flu-like symptoms. This male patient came in and complained of some URI symptoms, fever, and chest pains, and shortness of breath, and questionable contact with a Chinese national, he recalled. Because of that, he was interviewed further, but Dr. Wen said the man got frustrated and abruptly left. That's when, according to established protocol, they immediately contacted public health. Dr. Ann Pobutsky and public health medical director, Dr. Jana Manglotnia, pick up the story from there. Patient was fully evaluated by a Guam provider, had a complete history and physical checked out, and the provider even consulted with the Centers for Disease Control because of the situation we've encountered, just to be on the safe side, and he was cleared, Manglotnia said. He was not a person of interest, not a patient under investigation. At that point, the case was closed, but we asked what about the information provided to KOAM that the patient's spouse had recently been to Beijing and had just left again for China. Didn't that meet the criteria for further testing? Dr. Manglotnia wouldn't comment on the specifics of the case. Public Health says so far no cases have been referred to the Centers for Disease Control for Coronavirus Testing. This includes the 36 or so visitors from China that arrived before the federal travel ban was implemented. Annette Uggen, who's heading up the surveillance team, said they're checking up on them regularly. Public Health is well aware of the community's concerns and how quickly panic can spread. Director Linda DeNorsi promises continued transparency. We're at the forefront with public health to deliver you the appropriate information as quickly as possible, she said. And public health again reassures that there are no currently confirmed cases of coronavirus. As for what you can do, it's the same thing you would normally do to prevent getting the flu or any other respiratory type of illness. For example, make sure your hands are clean and wash them often. Avoid touching your mouth, eyes, or nose if you haven't washed them. Stay away from people who are sick and stay home if you feel under the weather. It is also a good idea to get a flu shot. Here are some of your comments. And Leon Guerrero said, I hope Guam is ready with the right tools and health safety measures. I hope they don't keep the truth from the public just to avoid public panic and then it's too late. This is very scary. I don't even want to go out of the house. Another Facebook user said, she keeps saying she doesn't know of his marital status. Don't you get why he's asking the question? He was said to be married to Chinese who recently came back from Beijing, and that worries many of us. Tom Shea said, Dr. Hua at the end said, yes, this patient should be a person under investigation. Public health says no. So who is right? And Therese Duenas says, how can you be so sure? Perhaps we should get the provider to answer these pressing questions. Why isn't he there tonight? Why hold a press conference and not have answers? What's the reassurance? This is no laughing matter.
KUAM put up a poll on Instagram asking if you are concerned about the coronavirus, and here are the results. A mother of three was killed in a car crash last Saturday. With gray skies above them, the Ludwig family gathered near a tree along Route 2 in Agate this past Saturday. The children of 39-year-old Karimi Louis Ludwig placed flowers at the base of the tree where the vehicle she was in on Saturday morning came to a fatal stop. Her death marks the second fatal automobile accident of the year. It was early Saturday morning around 2 a.m. when Guam Police Department officers with the Southern Precinct Command responded to a single automobile crash. Three people were in the car. After the crash, the victim was taken to Naval Hospital Guam, where CPR was conducted en route by Guam Fire Department medics. According to GPD spokesperson Sergeant Paul Tapau, Karimi Ludwig later succumbed to her injuries and was pronounced deceased by attending physicians. Right now, the Guam Police Department cannot confirm any of the statements that are made. We still have to bring the family in for an interview or the operator of the vehicle for pre-tip interview, Tapau said. Karimi Ludwig is survived by her husband and three children, including two teenage daughters and an eight-month-old baby boy. Funeral arrangements have not yet been made as the family says they are waiting for Karimi Ludwig to be discharged from the hospital. Many of you took to the comments to send your condolences to the Ludwig family. One Facebook user said, Condolences to the family. May he bless them with peace, strength, and comfort during this time of sorrow. Rest in peace. Another Facebook user said, My deepest condolences to the family. May you all find comfort in knowing she is in a better place. May she rest peacefully. Around the world, people pay their respects to the late Kobe Bryant. Basketball legend Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven other people were killed in a helicopter crash last month in Calabasas, California. Justin Dwayne, Julius David, and Joy Dominique Aguilo of Gigo shared these photos from a recent trip to LA in support of the Lakers and the tragic death of the great Kobe Bryant. The Aguilo siblings are huge fans and Joy was even able to sing the national anthem at one of their games two years ago. Before I go, don't forget Valentine's Day is coming up and you can enter KOAM's Looking for Love scavenger hunt. The link will Will be down below and over on uno magazine guam's instagram we will be giving away two tickets to sip and spray paint one of our valentine's day events suzu so Maasi for watching and i'll see you next time It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. Shell's Million Miles Giveaway is back, and we're giving 100,000 United Mileage Plus Miles to 10 lucky winners. You can jet off to Japan, break away to L.A., or even sightsee in Paris. So, how do you make a getaway? Just use your Lucky 7 card when you fuel up with 7 gallons or more, and you're automatically entered to win. Fuel up at your nearest Shell station today and start planning your new adventure. No purchase necessary. Some conditions apply. See store for details. All right, everybody, as you saw on our starting lineup live stream this week on Facebook, Sergeant Paul Tapao was here, and he actually took us to the Dedido Precinct, the Northern Precinct Command for GPD, showing us how physical fitness is a key element of being an effective police officer. Sarge is here right now. So, hey, Sarge, thanks, thanks so much for having us. Sabrina had a blast you know, <laughs> she, going through that obstacle course, and that is no joke. She did, a, she did great. You know, she was spent, and I think that's really important that, um, you know, she had an opportunity to experience that because as officers and she really highlighted the importance of the aspects of what we were doing. And you're right, you know, the physical aspect and what we do is, is 
is important to keeping our, uh, us as officers safe and, of course, the community. But she did a great job. And we want to send a special shout out to um, two friends of ours in GPD, Officer Jessalyn Diego and Officer Mike Wynn, who yeah. helped us out. They were, they were observing. They were making sure she did everything correct. And th that's the one thing because it's like, okay, anybody can do training and you can just say, give me 200 push ups, give me 500 mm -hmm. sit ups, and, you know, do like pump a bunch of weights. But the training and the way that obstacle course is structured is everything there actually has tactical applications for you and your colleagues as police officers, right? You're, you're working mm -hmm. on specific skills to use specific muscle groups, right? Absolutely, and you know, it's 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 it's, it's a corporate of a uh, circuit training type workout or, you know, um, those type of workouts that we're starting to see now more of the, uh, you know, the CrossFit uh, example because, you know, once you get into the mode of a foot pursuit actually engage uh, with the officer and of course the suspect, remember the, the whole concept of that is to really be calm and under duress and be able to make this life decision skills that is going to keep you alive and of course keep the community safe so many different things are happening and what sabrina probably didn't understand or probably didn't incorporate was the adrenaline that every every officer goes through mm -hmm. in situations like that and of course it's really hard to mimic that in a stage area but when you're face and uh you're face to face with a situation that you know that it's it's going to get dicey and things may happen it's really how do you how are you cap able to manage your your adrenaline because that's really the you know adrenaline is great but if you don't know how to manage it it can be your worst enemy because uh, you can hit a, an adrenaline high and um, when that high is gone it now becomes an adrenaline dump and your body may not be able to 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 handle that and um, you know this is why the pulpit um, the police um, officers physical agility test is designed that way so that every muscle every uh, movement it incorporates that of the situation mm -hmm. um, that we may encounter in in line police work and also for like the one thing that really surprised me was when Sabrina was going through the test and through the course you said okay now I need you to discharge you yes. know what was it six rounds six with rounds. your dominant hand off of this firearm and then switch hands and go from your yes. weekend that actually may happen in the field too. Mm -hmm. you, you may find yourself as an officer compromised and you need to be able to perform like with, with either hand, right? Absolutely, and you know, really when, if you put a workout into, into perspective, right, the, more, the most important thing is, of course, the oxygen to the brain. You know, you're moving at different muscles are, are, are demanding the oxygen. So the brain has to be able to, to tell you what the threat, you're perceiving the threat and how do you react to that, whether you have the ability to use your dominant hand or you have to use contact and cover and actually use another uh, position where you may have to use your, un your, 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 your weak support hand. So it's really, how, how are you gonna be able to manipulate in a safe tactical way? And you can't just go out there with just br uh, brute force. You gotta be methodical in how you're gonna approach things. Mm -hmm. Being able to manipulate a handcuff, she had a hard time. And we repeatedly told her, be careful when, and where you're placing your handcuffs. And that's one thing, uh, one of the aspects in which we teach our officers in officer survival is you're placing in handcuffs. Uh, me personally, I like everything in front because I, I work better that way and I practice that. Mm -hmm. And when, when the situations come where I'm able to draw my weapon or draw my handcuffs or have my radio and my flashlight, I can actually manipulate everything and I know where it's at. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, her understanding that and of course understanding um, the role as a police officer, these are things in which we train for. And that's why the um, utility or the, uh, the duty gear was essential and it was important part of the, the pulpit because you got to be able to know where your, your gears are and how, and how it works and how you're able to deploy it. Now, before we get to our crime of the week, I do want to ask you because there's not a whole lot that in your 20 some years as, as an mm -hmm. officer of the law that you haven't seen, right? But you always emphasize that any member of GPD, from the chief all the way, you know, yeah. to police reservist, you're trained to be a professional practitioner of the law. So when you're going through like a very scary situation, or you may have people you're you're trying to protect, how do you balance, you know, the natural mm. human intuition to say like, I want to go all, you know, uh, you know, I want to use every single bit of my energy to you know, restrain yeah. this person or I want to be professional you, because you still have a job to do as a cop. Absolutely. You've got to read them the rights. You've got to restrain them. You've mm -hmm. got to, you know, there's, there's a bunch of protocol you have to follow. It, it, it's, it's, it's training. It really, it is. It's, 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 you don't become, you're not born into a police. You're not born into be, being a police officer. The training will dictate how you're, 
um, going to be able to perform your duties. And um, training is really important because you got to practice. You got to keep practicing. Proficiency is going to require you to practice. You know, um, perfection is really covered under practice. Because at that point, it just practice, becomes like muscle memory and it instinct. It does. It right? becomes instinctive after that. You know what you need to do. You know that. I need to write the report. You know, you still got to protect the, the the individual's constitutional rights, mm -hmm. but you also got you also got to safeguard your safety. And this is why it's important that that type of pulpit training. It everything is asking for oxygen, and um, like I said, the most important thing is the brain being able to think under um, duress, being able to ma remain calm. It's really important, and this is where you know we, this is what I call the matrix matrix uh, matrix effect is when everything slows down for you and you're able to see things and be able to adjust so it's really the perception of how am, how am i going to be able to handle this or what is my next move mm. do i put you know everything here do i exert this do i use all my energies to get over the wall what is my next move after that so a lot of things come into uh, come into play but instinctively and and of course the training it it enables the officers to do their jobs the you know to be able to carry out their duties and their responsibility and of course to execute their job in it in, in, in safeguarding the community. All right, more from the sergeant in just a moment, but here is your crime of the week. The Guam Crime Stoppers and the Guam Police Department is seeking the help from the community relative to an armed robbery that occurred on Wednesday, January 29th on Governor Carlos Camacho Road in Timuni by the Onward Beach Resort Hotel. Now, the preliminary police report suggests that around 10:18 that evening, four female tourists were walking by the Onward Beach Resort when two unknown men armed with handguns demanded money. The unknown men then fled with their belongings in a light-colored sedan. The suspects were only described as Suspect number one is only described as Mel, standing about 5 foot 10, weighing between 165 to 170 pounds, having a dark complexion, and was last seen wearing a black long sleeve shirt and dark pants. This suspect had a black bandana over his head with a red bandana covering his face. Suspect number two is also a male, standing about 5 foot 2 to 5 foot 5 inches in height, weighing between 155 to 165 pounds. Suspect number two is also described as having dark complexion and was last seen wearing a long sleeve shirt and black pants with a red bandana covering his face. As a result of the robbery, two victims had sustained minor injuries. However, they refused any medical treatment. Should anyone who may have witnessed or may have any information about this robbery, you're encouraged to call our GPD dispatchers at 472-8911 or submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. If you have any information about this case, please call the Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HELP or text 688-STOP. You can also visit our webpage at www.guam.crimestoppersweb.com or call the Guam Police Department at 475-8615-6 or 7. Guam Crime Stoppers wants to remind the public that we do not use caller ID and you do not have to leave your name. You can receive a cash reward of up to a thousand dollars if the information provided leads to the arrest and conviction for the person or persons responsible for this crime or any other crime all right Sarge, thanks we'll see you next week thanks for having me all right stay tuned we're back after this Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. It is birthday time here on the weekend show, so if you're watching us on TV, streaming us on the internet, or enjoying us on podcasts, join me now, won't you? Happy birthday to Emiliana Kinata, who celebrates birthday number two on February 9th. Love, 
mom, dad, and your siblings, and you know, for good measure, that's each and every one of us Guamanians. We hope, Emiliana, you and your family have a wonderful, wonderful birthday. Have a great day. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and birthday. That's all the time we have from all of us here at Guam's News Network. Thanks for watching and have a safe weekend. Closed captioning is brought to you by Green Energy Solutions, Inc. Visit GESIGuam.com or call 647-8111 for more details on how we can help your business save money.